And of course, uh, Kenny Mapanga is standing by with another guest. Uh, Kenny, I do understand you have uh, uh, another NEC member, David Mahlobo, with you. Thank you very much, Bongiwe. Um, I'm coming to you live from the Garden Studio here in Nazrek, where we'll be chatting to NEC member David Matloba. Of course, as the ANC continues its work here at the 55th Conference, it goes beyond the uh, election of the top six leadership. We have to look at some of those challenges that we are facing in this country that are systemic. Over the course of the next few days, we'll be talking about different policies that the ANC intends to bring to the table here at the conference. I now want to zoom into the migration policy framework that they're going to be talking about. It's going to be tabled and it comes at a time when there is a rise of anti-immigrant groups in the country. I'm joined by Mr. David Matloba that has been uh, key to that committee and forming uh, this proposed uh, framework that is going to be brought to uh, the conference over the next uh, few days. Uh, Mr. Matloba, let's start here. What informs this need for an overhaul of the legislation that governs migration in this country? One would argue that to come to South Africa legally, it's actually quite difficult mm. and that this move might actually result in and more undocumented persons in the country? We, we managed, when after we came for the ANC National Policy Conference here, we received a lot of uh, uh, comments, proposals from uh, various organizations, including the Diaspora, um, the Tabon Peggy Foundation, and many other people. We have taken those into account mm -hmm. now. Uh, in the last two weeks, I was able to convene a joint meeting of Peace and Stability, mm -hmm. the International Relations Committee, and the Economic uh, Transformation Committee. When we met, we understood that the matter of migration is a global phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with a lot of opportunities, but at the very same time, it comes with challenges, mm -hmm. especially in the current climate, mm -hmm. where many countries are not doing well economically, there's a competition of scarce resources. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there's a strong feeling by certain sentiments mm -hmm. that uh, some people, they come here, they are competing for the resources. And then it started to raise the sentiments of uh, anti-migrants. Mm -hmm. But we must be able to say the ANC in its own tradition is not xenophobic. Mm -hmm. The policy proposal that we have, it has an element to say from an international relations perspective, what is our attitude as the ANC? The ANC says that in terms of the Freedom Charter, we must make peace and friendship. We belong to the global community. The paper we're presenting now, it will say that the relationships we have with SADC, with other regions in the continent, the AU, mm -hmm. the Commonwealth, the BRICS, the G20, the, G20 uh, the, uh, the G7 and so forth, that's how we're going to be looking at it, so that we can have strategic relations that will promote the economy. Mm -hmm. But at the very same time, there are security issues. Mm -hmm. Security issues where people, they come into these countries, they're undocumented, they promote transnational organized cr criminality, mm -hmm. whether smuggling of drugs, narcotics, a smuggling of humans, but even the possibility of terrorism. But at the very same time, we could see that the country over years, the ANC has never given the country what is this migration kind of a framework. So that those who are deployed in government, they are able to respond. Yes. Therefore, we'll be able to do that. And then ultimately, we want to overhaul the legislation, make it easy for people who want to come here on the basis that they are seeking re re asylum seekers or refugees. But at the very same time, there are those people that must come in to support our economy mm -hmm. in terms of tourism and in terms of the skills that they have. Well, one is arguing that it will mostly affect the economic migrants uh, from other African countries and that uh, you'll be doing away with things such as spousal visas mm -hmm. and relative visas, to name a few, making it even more difficult for people to access this country. And as home affairs even ready? Do they even have the correct system to deal with the number of applications that will follow from this policy framework if it is adopted? The perception that uh, the, our migration laws will become more restrictive mm -hmm. is, is unfounded. Mm -hmm. What we need to understand is that there has to be an appreciation 
that the countries that are allowing their citizens to come here, they too have a responsibility. We don't want a depopulation of those countries, especially in SADC and in the entire continent. Mm -hmm. And we need to, to think that we must agree in terms of bilateral, including the regional bodies, that there must be stability in their countries. Mm -hmm. Certain people must remain in their countries, but we must integrate. Our view is integration in terms of economical. Those that must come here must in reality come in on the basis that uh, in terms of our national interest, in terms of economic development, mm -hmm. movement of people. Remember, there's an African uh, free trade uh, uh, continental agreement mm -hmm. that we must be able to promote. But at the very same time, our resources are limited. Yes. They have to take some uh, responsibility to manage their issues like other countries they are managing even in Europe. If that is the case, uh, Mr. Matlobo, why is the focus on African migrants and not all migrants that come to the country? We must admit that uh, we have not been very good in terms of bringing the society along mm -hmm. because one of the problems we have is to conscientize our people. Mm -hmm. The people that you see here that uh, are Africans in particular, we all belong to this com continent. In other words, if we don't conscientize people that we're all Africans, mm -hmm. that these borders that we have are just artificial. Mm -hmm. They were made when certain people they met in, uh, in Berlin, they decided to do this thing. Mm -hmm. And look at the economy. This economy of South Africa at the, at the bedrock is mainly done by these people because it was a mining economy and an agricultural economy. We need to do that. Mm -hmm. But we must also admit that uh, we think these uh, neighbors of ours, they need to do more. Mm -hmm. That's why we're engaging them in terms of the bilateral uh, engagements, looking at our regional integration, including the agreements that we have, that let them take responsibility. We want them to come in. There must be no problem. But at the very same time, there are certain jobs that we must pro protect here mm -hmm. that South Africans must be able to do, like some of these jobs in the informal economy. Those are some of the things that we'll have to have that uh, particular understanding. If we don't, these organizations that are mushrooming, they will find space. They will find this anti-foreigner sentiment. Mm -hmm. And this matter as the ANC will address it because if we don't, it's going to become an election campaign ticket. Mm -hmm. And some of the parties during the last local government elections, they went in with their narrow approach around how they deal with issues of migration. Mm -hmm. They are becoming more protectionist to say South Africa is for South Africans when South Africa is part of the global community. Mm -hmm. Some of the optics would suggest that this might be an opportunistic move mm. um, during the past five years, the global mm. COVID-19 pandemic is what actually exposed mm. the systemic social and economic challenges that we actually have in this country. And it seems that the migrants have become a scapegoat for the ANC's failure to deal with those issues. And that the exodus, or rather foreign persons leaving the country, is not going to solve some of these issues that you're dealing with, such as unemployment. We should admit that uh, our economy has not been doing it over a quite some time for various reasons. Yeah. But our economy is linked with other economies of the world. The issues that have been happening in terms of uh, COVID-19, the tensions that are happening, they all impact on our economies. Mm -hmm. And we have the responsibility to get our economy work. But our economy, as long as it works, and the economy of in Zimbabwe and so forth, is not working. Mm -hmm. Definitely, people are going to move. Mm -hmm. And people are moving even to Europe and amongst European countries. And it's a global phenomenon that we must all be in a position to address it, mm -hmm. allow the movement of people, but ensure that the developmental concept and aspects that are related to Africa and the global community, we address them. Because if we don't, people are going to move. Mm -hmm. And people are going to have conflicts. And we cannot be in a position to afford to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, we, the criticism is fair towards the ANC, but at the very same time, we must admit that the ANC has done well over time. And we are actually at a period where there's been a lull and our performance has not been good. Mm -hmm. But in the last two to three months, you can see the offshoots. Mm -hmm. That the GDP is doing well. When you look at the issues of uh, employment, state labor service is doing well. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the development in the other parts of Southern Africa, we are not doing well. But the other Eastern Africa, you could see it's growing. And we should be able to do it jointly because 
as long as South Africa, everybody comes here, yes. will not be able to, to actually cope with the pressure. Lastly, if you adopt this policy framework the way that it stands right now, mm. uh, South Africa is afforded to all who live in it, whether mm. you have nationality mm. or not, or citizenship or not, rather, how will it pass this test of constitutionality? You'll be in court every day trying to implement this one uh, migration policy framework to uh, govern migration across all different spheres. Well, uh, we, are, we are having some challenges in terms of the legislative uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. South Africans, they think that uh, those that are feeling the pinch and um, encouraged by this kind of organization that are feeling xenophobia, mm -hmm. they think we should be making our laws more restrictive. But there are people that have been part of us here over decades and generations. Mm -hmm. They feel that some of these laws that will bring here, they are going to be problematic. We are not working alone. We are working with the United Human Rights uh, uh, Council on these particular issues, even those that are dealing with refugees, so that in the office of the SG, whatever laws that we do, they still meet our international convention in terms of the protocols we have signed, while we are doing an amendment, because we must amend, because we acceded to, to all the conditions. And many countries, even the development countries, there are certain conditions that they were not able to accede to. And we also reserve that particular right that we must withdraw and be able to deposit an instrument that is going to be responsive for our own condition, but guided by the principle that we believe in pan-Africanism, we believe in the integration of the region and the continent, but also the integration of the economy with the other, uh, with the other countries that are part of the UN. And uh, just one more question. For those who are sitting at home watching right now, migrants, mm. asylum seekers, refugees mm. that are watching uh, right now on SABC News, what does this mean? for them? Do they, do they need to prepare for a change in where they need to find another home? What does this mean? One of the things that we are going to discuss is that um, there are people, if you look at the border of um, between Limpompo and Zimbabwe, between uh, Limpompo and Mozambique, Mpumalanga and so forth, all those countries that are, are next to the borders. One of the things that has happened is there is communities in thousands mm -hmm. and those communities they are like stateless. Mm -hmm. But the majority of them, they were born here. We have agreed in our joint meeting to say that matter cannot be ignored. Okay. We'll be able to say the government must find a mechanism to be able to deal with those communities because they can't go to the neighboring state. Their parents have died. They are here in South Africa. They don't have documents. That's one component. But the others that are here, the decision that government has been able to make, let them respect them. If they need to be able to go and uh, uh, renew their permits, they must do the application. We want them to do that. But we will also be able to push that there are those that are not documented. We will want them to volunteer. Uh, to be able to come up, to say we are here, register them so that we can be able to process them within our own laws. Because if we don't do that, there are those that are involved in criminality. We can't have uh, their finger, fingerprints, uh, they are all over here, they are causing some problems in terms of our law enforcement. Those are some of the far-reaching implications that we are going to do. But we are saying that South Africa belongs to all Africans. Mm -hmm. But those who are here must be here legally so. Mm -hmm. Those that are undocumented, they are illegal. They are breaking our laws and will act without any fear or favor or prejudice when it comes to those issues. But South Africa is, is still uh, welcoming visitors. Mm -hmm. We still think that we are part of one continent, one region and one global community. Let's do business and respect the laws like they respect in other countries. All right, thank you so much. That was uh, Mr. David Mathobo, NEC member here, just outlining the migration policy framework that he confirms will be tabled at the 55th conference. It remains to be seen whether it will pass the test of constitutionality. Over to you in studio.